This is just to let you know that my last video got taken down because it received a copyright strike and the video dealt with Christine Lagarde, director of the IMF, the World Bank, um, Klaus Schwab, uh, Economic Forum, they're all part of this ruling class in which they're trying to enslave the global uh, population. And Christine Lagarde, using a very occult kind of numbering system based on sevens, was doing a secret coded message to her ruling elite uh, audience saying, now that we've enslaved most of the world, we're going to have to go after Japan and we're going to go after females to get them out of the home and into the working force so they can be like their counterparts in the United States where all the women um, are underpaid, overworked, head of households, and their poor, desperate children are just waiting to be slaves as they grow up. They want to do this in Japan. They want to take out the protections of the home life, of the uh, domestic tranquility of Japan and throw these women into the labor market. Again, underpaid, overworked, and exploitable. And I identified how she used the term jobs as we're doing more. We're concerned about job creation. Well, we know that Christine Lagarde and her ruling elite people have destroyed jobs in every country they've ever touched, mainly Africa. I mean, Africa is probably so devastated. Look at Haiti. Look at every place they go, Afghanistan. And we're still clapping and giving them audience and saying, oh yes, please, please be a job creator in these countries you've destroyed. It's called an economic hit. And they continue to do it. And they use the term job, which refers to Job of the Bible. You remember Job of the Bible? His rather nefarious God made a deal with Satan in which they decided to destroy Job's life. And then Job would continue to worship his very undeserving, very evil-minded God. This is what they call us, the sheeple. We are people who still believe in our God. No matter how, how many deals with the devil our leaders do with each other to destroy our lives, we still believe in the God that we were taught as children. Well, someday, some of us are going to have to grow up. And they say, put on our big girl pants, our big boy pants, and start looking at the indoctrinated indoctrination, the mind control, and the brainwashing we go through. Yes, there are some uh, followers that will never get it. They want to feel their virtuousness of following blindly very evil people. They feel somehow virtuous in contributing to the overall evil plan. But, and I'm going to tell you, individually, my family is very, very good. They are very good people. But collectively, they are contributing to this overall demise of the human race by these very evil, satanic people. And now I'm glad that people are now being able to use the term Luciferian and satanic openly, because this is what most organized religions are basically parading as. They are satanic Luciferian organizations with the clothing of Christianity. And it is a thin veneer. So everything you've learned as a Christian is completely inversed. It's the total opposite. And I'm going to show you, for example, one of my pet peeves is original sin. This was not part of the Christian theology. Christianity back then, they were a Jewish religion. They were Jewish. They were named Christians after Rome destroyed the Jewish population in Israel and decided that these rebels that were Jews needed to be called Christians. And let's create a religion that embraces everybody. So Rome brings in their pagan um, form of religion and they dress it up in Christian symbols. Well, it's not been Christianity since Rome. And that's what Joseph Smith was 
talking about when he talked about restoration of the original Christianity, which is pre-Roman, pre-Catholicism, and when Jews were really Jews, okay? They rebelled against the, um, the money-grubbing, war-loving Romans, who basically, as we now know, parade up in, um, well, missionary clothing of the mission, missionary young boys we send out two by two, who are basically part of the CIA, and then also the Roman Catholic garb, which underneath you can hide under your nun's uh, habit, you can hide your pregnancy, and they would be creating baby farms at these monasteries. And what would they use the babies for? Well, they'd use them for slavery, for sexual um, predation, and yes, also food. Sounds horrible, but it sounds like this is part of the nouveau riche Hollywood kind of cannibal club, and it's all coming to light. So let's move on into what I call the Bible Code and some of the twisted Christian theology that peep that are that is really satanic but people cling to it and call it christian and it's not and one of them is original sin there was no such thing as original sin in early christianity that came about long after constantine uh, developed his mind control system and pretended to be a converted christian that came about oh, probably during florence or the the Renaissance period, when they decided to invent the word original sin so they could just exploit and destroy women and use them for baby farms, slavery, etc. Whatever the Roman Catholicism now engages in secret. Uh, and they engage in these secret Mithraic uh, temples underneath the Catholic Church in which, yes, there are blood sacrifices as many whistleblowers attest to. They have been witnesses to priests sacrificing young children. It's an ancient ritual, one that came probably out of the last cataclysm when people, uh, like at the Donner Party, when you, humans become desperate, yes, they do prey upon each other for food, but when there's plenty of food to go around, civilization reemerges. And what these ruling elites have tried to do is just keep recreating cataclysms. If there's not going to be a natural cataclysm, they're going to create a cataclysm in every country they move into so they can recreate the desperate, psychological, emotional, and it's called a satanic mindset of humans who are, who are subjected to the trauma, unremitting trauma of scarcity, of slavery, and this is predictable. It is always predictable. Then there is a breakdown of society, such as in extreme famine. This Luciferian satanic cannibalism emerges naturally, and people prey upon each other. And basically, they prey upon each other unto death. Those are the last death rows of nature trying to get a community of people out of their misery and go to the relief of passing on to God's world, which I strongly believe in. So getting back to my theory of astro theology and astronomy and physics and religion, let's begin. My theory starts with the fact that the earth is the center of our solar system, not the sun. And the sun and the moon are composed of the plasma expulsions by the earth that occurs every 26,000 years. It is the excess photonic and electron um, expulsions that every atom must expel in its conservation of energy. As it gains energy, it's got to expel energy, just like a teapot. Well, every 26,000 years, the teapot of the Earth erupts into expulsion of photonic energy into the form of the sun and its electron or magneton energy in the form of the moon. And these are basically equal in size. 
No, the sun is not 93 million light years away. It's about the same uh, miles away from the earth as is the moon. And the reason why they cross in an ellipsis or there is the full ecliptic of the sun by the moon is because they're equal in size and they're about equal um, distance from the earth and they are caught their plasma expulsions caught by the dome the invisible dome of the interior earth sky as the bible tells us really directly god separated the waters of the um of above from the waters below that's in the noatic um period where the waters of the outer space or the blackness of space which is really electromagnetic water of helium and hydrogen they call it helium hydrogen and it's not empty space it's frozen obsidian impenetrable out there that is why it is impossible for any astronaut to travel outside the inner earth orbit because they call it the van allen belt but it is the the huge uh, atomic crushing energy of the outside pressure of the universe bearing in on the inward pressure of the interior dome of the earth and they are basically equal we my little heart is equal to the entire energy of the universe it is in such equilibrium that my little heart is beating as a result of the entire heartbeat of pressure of the entire universe bearing in on this little quadrant of the earth's solar system so let's continue the theory is the earth is the center of our solar system not the sun the sun and the moon are plasma expulsions by the earth of its excess photon and electrons and are captured by the impenetrable boundary of the inner earth ceiling dome and the outer earth exterior roof. These have been referred to as the Van Allen belts that domes the sky and which nothing made of matter or plasma can penetrate. Why? Because the forces of the entire universe is pressing downward on the Earth's domed atmosphere and the Earth's inner air pocket is equal in density to the entire universe. In other words, two forces of equal density are pressing on each other in an eternal struggle. Effie recently fired photons at the sky over a year period and tracked them. None of these photons penetrated the inner sky but bounced downward off the ceiling. The ruling elite are aware of this since they were unable to penetrate the inner earth ceiling with atomic bombs. And if the crazy NASA Nashi scientist had succeeded in penetrating the earth impenetrable ceiling, the earth and its content would have exploded like a balloon pricked by a needle. Therefore, since these early atomic experimental defeats the Nazi NASA scientists have been satisfied with simply the magic of cinema to pretend they are traveling in space. And why do they have to pretend, because, there really is no outer space outer space is filled with rock-hard obsidian like frozen electromagnetic energy. There is no space out there. It is completely filled like a dome of obsidian with pinpricks of photogenic light pricking the obsidian space dome like pin lights we call stairs. Stars are objects of burning electrical light, where the pressure is lessened in the overall density, dissolving the obsidian dome at points of interactions. So, the hidden secret of the universe is there is no escape. We live in a white hole terrarian surrounded by a black hole universe, which is known as the chrysal configuration of black hole surrounding an interior white hole for the maximum energy density separation. The electromagnetic energy separates at its maximum pressure density into white energy surrounded by a shell of black energy, or as above so below, on earth as it is in heaven, white energy or light of the interior of an atom, separates from the exterior electron of shelf of its skin or shell. White hole, black hole configuration that is formed in concentric shelf like Russian dolls. So what penetrates the dome and the obsidian black slash hole universe? Wimps. 
Non-material energy that is so non-interactive it is only captured at the core of the Earth as the wimps flow into the Earth inner atmosphere and are caught and by the huge furnace of the Earth core that makes all matter like lava flows that turn everything we see in our inner Earth into objects. These objects are based on templates located at perhaps the other side of the universe, non-local pattern of material and biological life that are produced as the Earth and its interior turn and are pressed and molded by pressure coming from another part of the universe. This is perhaps the universals Plato talks about. Local objects and biology are created from template universals that are structurally produced by the geometry of the universe as an entirety. So what are planets? The sun and moon are the energetic expulsions of excess energy that are captured by the domed impenetrable ceiling of inner Earth atmosphere and represents the 26,000-year journey of the Earth around the solar system as it gather energy like a tightening spring. When it reaches its maximum energy density, the Earth must express the energy in the form of excess photons or magnetos electron. Before the Sun and Moon, there was Mars and Venus expelled in a huge cataclysm that shook the Earth and created the mythical war in heaven as a shuddering Earth exploded at energy in a huge cataclysm. It may have moved at polar axis in a couple of weeks. The polar axis or North Star system was Draco and not Polaris as we have today. So the polar axis may have boomeranged from Draco over to Polaris in one cataclysm swoop and not in the methodical processions the stargazers tell us today. It did not take 12,000 years to go from Polaris to Draco, UT maybe only a few weeks as the Earth pole switch and Greenland and Canada disappears in glacial ice and the sea switch directions and the weight of the Earth completely changed direction. So we have this occult's family's claim they are the children of the dragon, or Draco star system which during this period of time Saturn and Jupiter were the sun and moon to the infant Earth. Jupiter was the sun and Saturn was the moon and Saturday the seventh day was created where before there had been only six day for every week or rotation of the clock. Also, Six ruled the geometry of biology so man during this period of are the mythical giants with six fingers and a tail and not five fingers with no tail like start fish based on geometry of pentagram and not the six fingered and tailed humanoids creatures of the hexagram which we see painted on Saturn. North Pole well from Draco to Polaris the Earth bounced around on its axis never finding it home base which is identified as Neptune who appears at a right angle in the sky and not at the 40 degree angle of the present tilt of the Earth. Therefore, the Bible with its code talked about being righteous or blessed by God for its right angle. And where does this right angled polarity square with? Well another biblical concept of the all-seeing eye of God, or the center of the black hole universe. The Earth polarity originate with the right angle to Neptune, or the center of the universe, or its black eye where God resides. So let's see where these Bible code leads us as we interpret the generation from Adam to the generation of Noah, to the generation of Christ. Or the year of zero which is Pisces age after Aries.